Hey, I just wanted to do today a quick proof of a few properties of the King's Principle. We'll actually have two um, formulas like this that we'll prove. The, this is actually really useful in a few contest type problems where it takes a, a complicated looking integral and makes it very easy to solve. I'm not going to do any examples in this video, we'll just prove this and I'll do the examples in separate videos. So to get started with this, we have this, we're just working with this generic integral over here on the left. And I'm going to do, I'm going to make a substitution. We'll make a U substitution. That's going to be B plus A minus X. Then doing that, you notice we can kind of swap the X and U. So we can also say that X equals B plus A minus U. And then taking a derivative. Of course, our B and A are just numbers. So those derivative of that part is zero. Derivative of minus U is minus DU. Okay, now we'll make our substitution. So we need to first update the limits of integration here. Um, so we'll plug in a B, and you notice if we have, for our top limit, we plug in a B here, we have B plus A minus B, but the B's cancel and we just have an A. And then similarly, at the bottom we're gonna have, we plug in an A, we're gonna have B plus A minus A, and so we're just left with a B. Then f, we'll plug in our x value, which is b plus a minus u, and then we're going to have our minus du. But then what I can do is take this negative sign out front and use the swap our limits on the integration. So instead of having a to b, we're going to have b to a, and we'll remove our minus sign. So then we'll, have, we'll just keep our f to the b plus a minus u du. But then because it's a definite integral, we can take our variable u and we can just make it an x because in a definite integral, the variable name doesn't matter. It's not gonna change the value. So we can write this as f of b plus a minus x dx. And that's what we wanted to prove. And just a little side note, what does this actually do for us in an integral? Maybe in some cases, not much, but it provides, we get an identical copy of the integral that's gonna look different. So I think in the next, well, the next part of this proof, and then you might see where this is more valuable. Okay, so for part two, I think what we're gonna do, just to make it really clear, is just do the same U substitution again, essentially. We'll do A plus B minus X, and then we had from before, this is gonna be A plus B minus U. Our DX is minus DU. So then when we make this substitution in here, so notice, this piece here is actually our u. So then we're gonna swap our bounds again through the same substitution. So we're gonna go from a to b. Our f of x is gonna be f of a plus b minus u. I just changed the order, it could be b plus a minus u, obviously it's commutative. And then this one's gonna be f of u. And this one's gonna be f of a plus b minus u, du. Um, we have this minus sign. So we can swap our bounds again. Okay, so we'll, we'll use that minus sign to go from B to A, but we'll do this all in one step. Our U, we, because it's a definite integral again, we can change our variables, so we'll change to X, and we're gonna have F of A plus B minus X over F of X plus F of A plus B minus X DX, which is exactly what we have right there. So we've made this copy of the integral that's just a little different looking. And I think in the next step, we're gonna see where this really pays off. Okay, so here in this next step, what we've done, we've taken these two integrals that are the same, they're equal, we've added them together, and that allows us to put them inside of one integral. Now, the cool part, and why this works so well, is because notice that we actually have the same denominator, so we can combine denominators. And then when we add f of x to f of a plus b minus x, we end up with the same numerator and denominator, right? This is this part is the same as this part, and so that's just gonna be one. That all cancels out to one here, and we're just integrating dx. And then this last part here, we're doing this very simple integral. We're integrating one, we're getting x from b to a, and so that's just gonna be b minus a. And then so when we go through all these steps and we're doing this in an integral, the only thing we have to notice is we did kind of cheat in one place. We added these two integrals together, so we actually doubled our integral. So because we've actually made two copies, what we need to do is we need to recognize that this is actually 
this is actually two copies that equals b minus a. So to find the value of our original integral, we just need to divide by two. And we have this nice formula, and that's how you can sometimes solve these in like two seconds, but you just subtract the lower bound from the upper bound, divide by two, and you have your solution. So that's it, that's basically how it works with the King's Principle. So I'll stop it there, there'll be more videos coming with examples on this. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.